Hello, and welcome back to Azure Terraformer. I'm going to be starting a new series where I'll be drawing from a series of private one-on-one -on -one mentorship sessions that I gave to my LEAP intern. The LEAP program is a wonderful program at Microsoft where we try and draw talent from other industries into Microsoft to increase the diversity of thought and bring new perspectives to software engineering. I think it's a great idea. In fact, some of the strongest software architects, software engineers that I've ever met don't have computer science degrees. They came into this industry as self-taught individuals, quite inspiring. So I was humbled to be selected by my manager to be a LEAP mentor. And as part of this program, I spent quite a lot of one-on-one -on -one time sharing whatever I could of my knowledge in software development and software architecture and cloud and DevOps to help this person succeed. So this series might be a little bit eclectic and might be a little bit rough because I'm doing all of this off the top of my head with no plan. So bear with me. I hope you find it useful, at least some of the topics, but I've got about 36 hours of recording. So it's going to take me a while to chop these up, but this is the first talk. It's all about Swagger and the open API specification. Seems like a good enough place as any to get started. Anyways, without further ado, here we go. Swagger is a JSON-based description language for what a REST API can do. Um, so it has structure to it that's uniform and consistent, which means you can build tooling around it that generates a UI, like Swagger UI. And Swagger UI is just like, okay, we have a consistent format for describing how to interact with the REST API. Now I can build a simple GUI that reads that JSON specification for how to interact with that REST API. And then I can build kind of a pretty interface that'll let a developer like try out the REST API. So it's it took us beyond manually documenting REST APIs to fully automated documentation of REST APIs. Because you could just like with any, no matter what language it's written in, C Sharp, Java, Python, Go, you know, there were plugins that would basically emit a Swagger specification for your REST API. Um, and no matter, so no matter what you coded in, you had a consistent specification for how to interact with it. So once we had that, we went beyond the, just automating the documentation. Now we could kind of automate the clients. And that mm -hmm. is both a graphical user interface, which is Swagger UI, which allows developers to kind of test out a REST API that maybe they've deployed or maybe somebody else has deployed and they've been granted access to. But it also allows us to do things client side, like generate an SDK around a REST API in a convenience language. So I've got a REST API and it lets you order pizzas through my pizza shop. I want anybody who wants to build a mobile app or a website, Facebook, plugin, widget, whatever. I want anybody to be able to be able to order a pizza through my pizza shop. So I publish an open API specification out there. No matter what application you're building, what language you're writing it in, whether it's a desktop Windows application, whether it's a Mac OS application, an iPhone app, a JavaScript web app, you can take that open API specification. You can generate a client side client side code in whatever language you're, you're writing it in. And basically you it, it'll abstract the low level HTTP operations from you. So instead of like me ordering a pizza, I don't have to know like, oh, HTTP post at this like magic string pass in, build a build a string request body and attach these headers and do all this craziness and then submit HTTP HTTP post with open API specification. I can be like, OK, I'm writing this in Java, so I'm going to run Java Swagger code gen and generate a Java client library. And now I've got a class called pizza client and pizza client has a method called order pizza. And that takes in simple parameters like the size of the pizza and the toppings on the pizza. And rather than having to know all the crazy HTTP stuff, I just 
say, new pizza client, pizza client that order pizza. That's it. So it makes it super, super easy for me as a developer that's trying to use that REST API to consume it because I don't have to worry about all the plumbing of dealing with low level HTTP stuff. In the Swagger specification, the Swagger specification has to define get, post, put, all that stuff in the Swagger spec. But the Swagger code gen comes later and the Swagger code generation basically takes that specification, which describes get, post, put, pizza, and all, the, and all the crazy JSON that describes a pizza size and a pizza toppings and all that jazz. And the code generator, the Swagger code generator, looks at this that Swagger specification and generates the Java code and makes it sim simplified so that I don't have to know, get, post, put, whatever. I'm just like, oh yeah, create a pizza, get status of pizza. And so the specification also allows you to, as a REST API developer, you can embed metadata that can provide a better experience for those code generators. Like what's the description of this method? What is the name of this method? Like, so that it will generate a method that's a little bit more sen commonsensical. That's like order pizza as opposed to pizza post. So the Swagger specification has a little bit of, a little bit of metadata, like that is kind of a creative writing exercise for the, the rest author to inform how the documentation should be written, but mostly it's auto generated ba based on like the actual code that is creating these, these endpoints in, and in ASP.NET it's in the controllers in your controller, you define methods and then you annotate those methods to, you know, using ASP.NET attributes to say, oh, this is a HTTP uh, post, or this is HTTP get, here's the route, here's the request type that it'll take in, here's the potential response types that it'll send back, yada, yada.